Hey guys and welcome to the vlog. What I'm about to show you now has actually been filmed three days after the vlog which I'm about to play in the next two minutes. So I'm going to give you a quick update of what I've done and my frustration so far. So the vlog that I'm about to show you is myself and my mate Ben. We're busy doing some testing with the cell light and trying to figure out what error codes. So this is the condition of the car right now. Uh, I'm busy pulling the intake section apart, I've pulled off the intercooler pipes, the car is still giving me the same symptoms. I have found a problem though with the vacuum leads. So I pulled that section off, strut bar is going to come off now. I'm going to pull off this whole assembly. There's an issue where the pipe that goes from down there somewhere, I can see it over there hopefully, but this piece broke off. And it's supposed to be sitting on a filter which I was trying to make a temporary thing here, but I'm just going to go buy a new one. It broke as well. So basically the pipe inside had the filter and then this was going to a little vacuum box type thing. That was broken, I put some temporary piping in. I used the filter from the black RX-7, started the car up, same shit. The air code that it's throwing is the idle air control solenoid, which is at the back here. Now I've actually pulled it out, I've cleaned it, used carb cleaner, dried it out, put it back in the car, I'm still getting the same error. When I do the diagnostic, and you'll see in the video, it's showing error code 34. Now error code 34 is the idle control solenoid. When I pull the plug for the idle control solenoid, I get error 23. Now error 23 is supposed to be a fuel thermo sensor. Strange, but I can replicate the same issue on this car. So if I pull the little plug, which sits just underneath this guy, it gives me error 23. Anyway, so what I did is, I pulled the idle control solenoid from this car, moved it across to the silver one, and the car's giving me the same symptoms, doing the same shit. So I put everything back together, made sure the black one starts, and now I'm back to messing around with vacuums and all of that. So I'm glad I found a problem with one vacuum lead. I temporarily fixed it, I tried to start it, still have the same problems, misfiring, spluttering, etc. A lot of you guys are saying just do a compression test. Well, I can't do one right now. There's one company within 500 kilometers of me that has a rotary compression tester. He won't lend it out, I need to get the car out to him. The only way I can get the car out to him is to obviously tow it or get on the road. I can't do either legally until I get some inspection done on the car. In layman's terms to basically say that the car has been legally imported. From there I can start applying for 3 day, 21 day permits etc. So I cannot get this compression test done unless I buy my own tester which will come from overseas. It's still going to take 2 weeks. So I'm f***ing around with the car. I'm trying to fix what I'm trying to fix. So it could well be Apex seals. I still don't know yet. I will find out in about two weeks when I get the car to the shop so they can do a compression test. In the meantime, I'm trying to figure out what's broken. I'm stripping whatever I find that's broken. I'm either swapping or I'm replacing. And that's all I can do for the next two weeks. So 99% of you guys have been really supportive and helpful, commenting, giving me ideas, telling me to try certain things, which is cool. Thank you so much, dudes. There's been a select few people that have been popping on and saying, just get a fucking compression test done. Uh, stop horsing around, stop messing around. I can't. I've got to do something. Would you guys rather me not film this at all and just maybe put out a vlog a week or maybe a little bit less? Maybe a vlog every two weeks until I fix this damn car? Or should I carry on in this journey and take you guys with trying to fix this car with what I have? Okay guys, that's it from me. I'm going to carry on with the vlog. The vlog is from three days ago where we were just figuring out what engine error codes there are. So I hope you guys enjoy and I'll see you in the next video. So this is a continuation from the previous vlog where I landed up pulling off that drive belt that was connecting the power steering and the aircon pulley. The belt that's sitting right over there. I was hoping that it was providing false knock to the ECU and causing the fuel cut or spark cut and well that wasn't the damn case. So I've got a list of things that I do want to try and it's a long list so obviously like test coil packs, check vacuum leads, long 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 list i posted it in the last video so one thing that i haven't done is actually check the engine codes to see if there's any broken sensors or anything's wrong with the car but it turns out that the jdm models don't have a check engine light in them so you've got to build a little resistor pack with an led on it and connect it into this little diagnostic box in the engine bay 
Let me show you dudes. This little diagnostic box. So it's got all these little pins here and you, you just basically take a paper clip and you jam it into two of these little plug things here and then you put an LED somewhere there. Now I've got it written down somewhere, I must check that out. Now that will allow us to pick up the engine codes. Now, I've got my buddy Ben coming across. He is an electrical engineer. He's put together a little 680 ohm resistor, I think that's what it is, with a little LED. He's gonna bring that across. We're gonna plug that in now, we're gonna test it, and hopefully the sensors are throwing some readable codes that will tell us what's wrong with this damn car. Okay, dudes, Ben has just arrived. We are going to be starting and we're going to be doing this diagnostics in the car and this is my buddy Ben. How's it going? Say hi to the vlog. We are going to be doing this diagnostic thing like I explained. The JDM models do not have a check engine light. So Ben has been kind enough to help me out and he's got an LED. What have you got there? Yep, just a little LED. With like something on it. Little resistor. Okay, just cool. Quick make sure check engine light. Alright, perfect. So we're going to plug that in now and hopefully this car will give us some check engine light faults and we can determine what's wrong with the car. Okay, so it'll be fin and ground. Where is fin? Oh, it's this bottom right one here. If you... Yeah. Okay, so that's going to be there. Ground. Okay, we can use the same ground. Okay, well, yeah, I mean, that should work. Okay, I'm going to put the car in ignition. I'm not starting it. Huh? Yeah. Can you watch the no. LED? Well, so it should stop blinking as soon as you... Go, put the ignition on. Hopefully. Okay. Uh, actually, it says something that once it's plugged in, that it blinks even though there's no codes. It'll the cell will turn on for two or three seconds, then go off. Okay. If there are still codes, then it will start uh, flashing the codes. I didn't touch all Okay. If it stays on, possibly the jump wire or pep clip's not making a good connection. Okay. So we, if it's just two or three seconds, then we actually quite unhappy because that doesn't tell us anything. Okay. Alright dudes, I'm going to put the car in ignition now and hopefully this is going to show us a little LED flashy thing and so three short flashes will take us to the 30s, right? Uh, assume if that's how it decodes. Um, okay, the codes can display 10s digits and 1s digits. A 10s digit is 1.2 seconds long, a 1s is 0.4. So 1s is the short, a 10s is the long. Okay, so there's the start. Yeah. Then we get one flash, Two long flashes, three long flashes, then pause. One, uh, one, two, three, four, five. Or four. You see, the, the five actually yeah, goes into like the break. stop. Yeah. Yeah. So I think it's four. So it's 34. So that's the break. One, two, two three, three, and then it'll be a short break. One. And then one, two, three. three. Four, five, no, I'm sure it's just four, four then. Yeah. Yeah. So it's either 10 and 4 or 34. <laughs> Is there a 10 and a 4? There's no 10. Okay, and there's no 4 either. So I, I reckon it's got to be 34. I think I did it on purpose maybe. So we managed to find out that it's throwing error codes and you guys try and decrypt it and see if maybe we're wrong but it seems like it's throwing error code 34 which on the list is idle air control valve now that's just behind the throttle body so that's a good place to start and it could be causing all these issues so ben and i are going to take a look right now because it's saying yeah that it's open or short that's that's literally what that error code says that the solenoid valve is open circuit or short circuit yeah. um so if we could check on, on it, if it is open or short, then that would help a lot. This will be a small hand, this is going to be very useful. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm, that's going to work for me. Um, apparently you guys are seeing 0 0.8 ohms. That sounds about right for a solid bulb. Okay. Oh yeah, I'm, I'm not going to be able to get that out from here though. Oh. In there, we're going to have to pop it out. So we're with the black car now and we've decided that we're going to plug this guy in here and pick up codes off this car. Now funny enough this car has also got issues. We don't know what it is quite yet because it's throwing a 35 for what it seems like and there's no 35 on this piece of paper. So you dudes have a look at this and tell me what you think. Now to me that looks like a 35. Now I'll put this up on this next video in the comments. You guys take a look. 
what we are thinking is that this sheet and this information that I've got, this is from a 1994 USDM version. I've obviously got a JDM version, there's no check engine light in the car. And I don't know how to decode this. And maybe, just maybe there's a 35 in there, or maybe there's a 37 or 36, and we don't know what they actually stand for. So maybe our idle air control valve is not the problem. So the next thing that Ben and I are gonna do is we're gonna pull out the connector for the idle air control and we're gonna see if it throws the same error and the same number on this car. So I'm just gonna pull the ignition out. Hey, off there. Yeah, off. And it's the 35. Okay, so unplugging that connector gave us a 33. So maybe that isn't the idle air control. What did you say, port bypass? It said port bypass. Yeah. Port air bypass. Okay, well. It's also a solenoid valve. Oh, there's a throttle. I was going to say maybe throttle position sensor, but that's 18. Interesting. Okay, so maybe that isn't what we're looking for. So there must be something else here then. Okay, so there must be a second solenoid valve on this. I'm going to kill this car so the battery yeah. doesn't run out. So in theory now, if we pull that out, that might Should give us an 18. be number 18, which is throttle position sensor, narrow range. And there's the reset. One, two. One, two. Eight. Okay, so we had a 12 and, a long and then an 18 yeah. and then I think we're going to get the 33 now. 34, sorry. Wait, One, did you see a 12? Two, yeah. So, the first so one you was saw a 12, 12 which One. is throttle position sensor full range. And then you saw an 18. Yeah, 12 and 18. So that is throttle position sensor narrow range. Yeah. And then you saw the 34 again, which is idle air control. Yeah, okay. So that, that, I mean, that is definitely TPS. So unplugging that connects, it gives us a 12 okay. and an 18. So let's put the TPS back in. Yeah. Uh, let me kill the power to the car. Okay guys, so we haven't been able to figure out what the problem is, but we are getting closer and it seems like the idle air control valve is definitely the problem. It's throwing a number 34 code. We've tested this by pulling out different sensors and it is corresponding with the codes on that piece of paper that I have from a 1994 workshop manual for USDM car. We are sure it's the idle active control system. The only problem is I need to go back to work and I need to Google this. We need to figure out what it is and then we're gonna tackle this again. More than likely you're gonna to have to pull out the UIM. Maybe it's a vacuum that's, that's perished. Maybe it's something that's blocked. Maybe the solenoids are working or wires pulled. Either way, there's a sensor fault and this sensor could be causing all the issues on the vehicle. So guys, thanks so much for being here. Thank you for all the support and we'll see you in the next vlog. Don't do it for me